So here we go. We've got that new race. Like I said, I believe it is. This would be part four if I can't edit those videos together so far. Um, but this is just a runner-up to part three, if that is what it is. Um, where I missed showing this part of the installation of this, and then also the installation of the hub back together, like I did on this wheel. So let's come over here to this one. Now, this one's also got some buggers around this metal here, and I don't like it. So once again, I'm going to clean that up just a little bit of scotch bright, and, you know, be nice and gentle not to scar up this, or scar up this, you know. Just try, try your best to very lightly catch that little boogers there. It's not the end of the world, but it is something that we don't want to see. So I'm going to do my best to make sure that doesn't cause any more issues. So pretty much situation is we got everything disconnected and torn apart just like on the first video. Um, this time it was way more um, uh, organized. But once again, both of these nuts were extremely loose, finger loose. This is also in bad shape, but I have seen worse. So it wiggles, it jiggles. Now I got grease in my pants. Oh, that was wonderful. That's what you get for holding greasy parts without a rag. Uh, this is the spring. All this stuff is going away, so it's not like it's in the world that I just drop stuff, but it's no fun. So this sat in here. So, and then there was this ring. So, once I got everything taken apart, you know, you take the cap, cap off. Um, there's a, a couple rings and springs you got to take off to get that off. Then there, pop that off. You know, you've got your spindle nuts from that point. Pull your washer off, pull your second spindle nut, pull off the first bearing, put one of the spindle nuts back on, and like slide hammer, wang, wang, till that, um, the bearing back one and the seal come out together as one unit very greasy very very greasy plenty of rags are going to be needed for this job so but that's all looking good not not feeling bad about the threads there's no significant wear mark you know you can see the bearings road here and then the other one wrote here, so when we put everything together, I'm going to be sure that there's grease on those. Um, and, you know, don't be super liberal, but don't be super conservative either. Um, put put a pretty good amount of grease on there, you know. it's I'd say myself, it's just common sense for how much you'd put on there. You know, you're not going to fill the entire space or else you're going to have grease blowing up out the seals and... It's dirty, but if you don't put enough grease, you know, if you only put it like that much, just where there's barely anything in there, you know, how's that going to lubricate anything? You know, how's that grease going to spread out? So think of it logically. You're putting enough grease to get on all the components, but you're not drowning it in grease. So off I go to, yeah, I guess, let's get this guy beat in over here. And I'm just waiting on some new gloves. These ones are covered in grease on the outside part so I can't really flip them over and let's see if I, I think I'm getting my uh, ooh. I'm getting my gloves right now so perfect we're gonna see what he has to say That's in. Here's the picture. And here's the glow. For your arcing. Um, I think I arced it when I was just putting all my stuff. I think I actually touched the power wire to the bottom of the feet. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh. Okay. Well.
this and this and this, and I know that there's reverb and delay and there's effects and saturation and there's warmth. And, and yeah. They, sometimes, oh, no, not sometimes. Most of the time, you're just supposed to cut breaths out. But if you're in the middle of a verse, you're not supposed to chop that breath out because it's supposed to go natural. Yeah. At the beginning, where you go, you shut off the, like you cut off the whole, especially when you're layering 12 of them for a chorus. You're like, if I just go with the 12 of the biggest breaths in the world overlaps, you know? Yeah. So your job is to just cut those out. But you don't do that in verse because it feels unnatural. The person singing never breathes. <laughs> so you're able to hear all that shit? I hear all of it. She's like, when the sub goes out, she doesn't hear the difference. She can't hear the sub disappear. And I'm like, like, you don't feel that? You don't hear it? It was full, and now it's empty. And nothing. Yeah, and, and Wolves came on this morning, and Wolves has a lot of that ambient. It goes, and so it feels full. And then the bass drop was supposed to hit. And, then and she, goes, she, she like, goes, she goes, she goes, this song sucks. <laughs> Something's wrong with this song. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, I'm glad that's all fixed up now. Okay, so we're dipping this. I can try my best with the, the camera being finger greasy. Right here, I've got the bearing. That's actually really a pretty alright camera angle. Okay, so you're gonna pretty much dose this whole bearing in the grease. Just gonna roll it up in there, and then grab a glop. I'm gonna scrape it to the back of my hand here. And then with a twisting and up motion, you're going to pack the bearing. And this is very time consuming. But I don't have the tool to do it. There is a tool out there, I guess. So I don't know what it's called. I don't care because this this is just fine for me. It feels a little more authentic too. I mean, I don't know if... Uh, Marijuana is a normal thing, but it's like crushing weed with your fingers. It just feels a little bit, uh, a little more proper, a little more, uh, connected, I guess. So, here we go. Packing this, this bearing. Takes time. It's something that you want to make sure is See, you full of grease. I'm so excited. Yeah. That yeah, was so I, exciting. We were there. I, I was in your I area. Like, I was about to leave. <laughs> Has Storm said anything about it yet? Yeah, no, we're excited as fuck. We started it over so we could watch it with Noah and Maddie. Is it one of those, like, every Thursdays comes out with new episodes yeah, again? I think so. That's cool as shit. We got Noah and Maddie to both go, I want to binge watch this entire show tonight. And then we and Storm go, well, every episode's almost an hour long. We're four hours into it, and there's six hours left, so... If you really want to stay up for, for another ten, day... A ten straight-hour show binge, sure, but... Let's go here. Yep, so we're almost used up on all the grease that I initially glopped out, so that that's pretty good. And after you're done with the one side, go to the other. And something I should have done before I started greasing was flip this fucking rotor over. Now I look like a dipshit, but back to the other side now. I'm trying to get on video so you guys can see. Scrape it up, scrape it off your fingers. So now it's now it's all on this bearing here. If you thumb, slide it out, and then roll into it. Hell of grease on these fingers. Okay. More inside. Now I got grease on there again. Try to slap it off, and then once again, it's like a press and roll into your palm. You just gotta, just gotta really make sure these are packed with grease. That all the rollers are gonna be thoroughly happy with their quantity. So roll, roll, pull the grease out, scrape it back. It's just this almost monotonous. Um, process here. And now I'm going to press it all in. 
I'm gonna have to grab some rags here so I don't really. And I like actually learned my hood, so even though it's crooked, I can close it consistently. Yeah. You go on the left side, you pick up, and on the right side, you push down. And then as it comes down, you go. And so you keep that right side down farther than the left side as it closes. And that's how you close your hood, huh? And it closes really good. That's good. And then with this being like so, um, I can't really show you because I got extremely greasy fingers right now, but right to my left here is the rotor. The hub side down, top of the rotor's up so that I can set this in and spin it around where I'd press that um, race into. So now I'm spinning it, which what that does is it works the grease into the rollers because, you know, it's being a wheel bearing, it's pretty tough. You can't really spin it by yourself you just you're rolling and kind of glazing over top the rollers it's not doing nothing so you set it in there and with your fingers best you can you spin them around there you go got a little bit of movement here all right now that that's like so you can see a little bit of like gapping inside where it worked itself up so it's not packed anymore same thing on the back side little bits worked itself down like right here there's a, a visible roller so Fingers again, get a good old glop. This time you don't have to get as much, you know, you're just topping it off now. And you just kind of press and roll, press and roll. Press, press, roll and roll and press. All right. So that's pretty much that. That's packed with grease. I'm very confident that that's how it's supposed to be. I packed that just as much as my other one. Spins good, grease is in super well packed i'm also going to put more in the spindle anyhow so you know that's it's packed with grease that's the important part now while we're over here because i only have this one extra set of gloves i'm going to pre-grease pre like pack my other bang but i'm not putting it in until the spin or like this is put a seal on and i just am not prepared to put it in so you want to skip this it's probably gonna take a couple minutes um, I'm not going to put a timestamp up I'm not that fancy on my computer but I'm going to just pack this with grease so step one you know stick it in there really roll it around just like get some grease all over it grab it push some in now you can't really set this one in and spin it like the other one so this one, even though it's smaller, it's going to take a, just a little more time because we we got to pack it all the way before we put it inside that spindle. Put it on the spindle, I guess, inside the hub. Um, all right. Now that's kind of covered. Pretty covered, I'd say. I'm going to grab that glop of grease. Pretty good amount here. Try to work it down to the back of the hand because you really... Your palm is going to be the helpful part because it's a nice stiff and you press while you roll in. You know. Dang it. There's just a lot of the grease. So it's it's pretty pretty dang messy. And it feels almost like you're not really getting anywhere, but you are. You just gotta keep working it and make sure you're using the best technique you can. Most annoying part in my opinion is when the grease gets pressed inside and I have to scoop it back out, that's no fun. Like in the middle here. So, but here we go again. Get some more press. Don't be shy about, you know, pressing your hands together really good. Work it in there. Smart. 
these up here. Some more of these right there. Try to be uh, non-wasteful with this stuff. It's just super greasy and messy. And um, throwing this stuff away like just a really dirty rag or a dirty glove. Um, in case of a fire, this stuff burns and burns and burns. Grease is... Grease fires are the ter are the worst. Oil greasy fires, not fun. Um, I have no idea how flammable this stuff is, but I do know that having it around is not good. So try to save as much as you can. Try to use as much as you're pulling out. Um, put back as much as possible. And then when you're throwing this stuff away, all the rags and the the, the uh, gloves, make sure you throw them outside. Put them in your outside trash can. We have a dumpster, so. If you have a dumpster, put it in that. If you have just a big old neighborhood trash can, same thing. Just throw it out there. Okay. Feels pretty dang full of grease, so we're going to go ahead and flip it over and do the other side as much as we can. Because, like I said, this one's the one that we can't spin around, work the grease into the rollers like we could on this one. So, I keep getting distracted looking at the the wheel here that or the bearing that I'm forgetting to show the camera what the hell I'm doing so I apologize get that grease off use my thumb again to kind of pull it back out it's a bunch of shit work it out press it in press it in spin it there we go Make sure that crap's really in there and really all over it. Okay, since I don't have a, a like really good spot to put this greasy, greasy, greasy bearing, what I'm going to do is put it back in the grease until I'm ready to pull it out and use it. Because that will make sure that it's covered, contained from the elements, so it's in there now. I'm going to put it upright so I can fucking find it again. It's right there, it's sitting inside. Here's the lid. So I don't have a Ziploc bag or anything. Ugh, damn. Ah, I cut my wrist open. Just kidding. All right, well. Damn it, should have pulled some of that grease off. There was obviously enough there. I could have saved some. I was just talking about it too. Let me see here until I get my rags. Get my hand cleaned off okay and because as of right now I'm not ready to go out to my dumpster I'm gonna take this bag that I got the parts from and I'm gonna store all my like super oily shit in there a deck a dedicated uh, grease bag so, a bunch of greasy shit that the phone is on so I'll pull the phone off for a moment so and that's covered in these. Not the dirtiest, but you've got stuff like this. You know, imagine catching this cloth on fire. I mean, that would just burn and burn. So. These ones are still usable, I'd say. They're still clean enough to wipe down some shit from uh, an axle before you start working on it. So I'll keep those ones aside. They're not too bad. Wipe this extra grease off the rotor. Grease off of the top here, so I can actually pull the lid off. Because that's for my bearings. Now, obviously, you're going to need to spray all of this down with brake uh, cleaner when you're done. Um, I'm not ready to spray it yet because I still have to put my seal on. And if you spray it while there's grease inside your bearings, it, it'll eat away the grease. So, you probably shouldn't do that until you're ready. Just a suggestion. I ain't your mama, so do what you want. Here's this oil seal. This looks like this. It's got this as the flat section that you're going to be pressing on. This is the section that slides in here. So, 
line it up on there pretty straight find the punch that fits perfectly right there I'm putting it this way where the taper is towards me so when I hit down it's hitting on a flat surface here's your nut put it on All right, make sure this is as straight as you can. If you're not careful, this oil seal in here will slip, go crooked, and then while you're hitting it down, um, you'll actually be damaging it. So very lightly tap it at first. Make sure it's seating all the way. I can tell this one's not, so I'm gonna try my best to fix it. Now it's seated, so with my hands not so greasy, I can let me wipe off this corner here. That is got good. Perfect. So now it's seating. It's pretty dang straight. With this being a rubber styled um, seal, I guess. I don't know what the right term is. But it'll actually form itself a little bit. It can go in a little crooked. It'll fix itself. That's pretty straight, and so I am going to keep smacking it. So yeah, I hope that's a good angle. I can't see the camera anymore. I'm not hitting too hard. I'm kind of just using the weight to come down, and I give it just a little more of a, like a whack to help the force go down. So there's the seal going in straight now. It's all the way in. So. That should be all the way, all of the seal, perfect. See a little bit of the red for when it went in a little bit crooked at first, but it's no big deal now. That's pressed in. The others have been pressed in. It's ready for action. All right, let's get a reposition going on here. I gotta find a good camera angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll actually try using this because I think that'll be a good height for the installation. So what are we thinking right here? Is this smelling good? Maybe if that wire wasn't in a way. Um, and then let's zoom in to like 1.5, maybe two. All right, now you are just far enough away that I'm going to talk a little louder. So I'm grabbing the rotor now. Let me kind of sit down right in front of you here. And we want this to just seat all the way back. There it is. All right. So now that's seated. It's got a little wiggle to it, but that's in there. That's all the way back. Perfect. I'm gonna go grab that grease because that's my bearing. We're just about, just about ready, I say. This guy. Got my rags because, like I said, it's a very important thing to have. You've got your grease, and before I start really getting into this, because I'm going to leave these open, I'm going to mute them here in just a second. I'm going to pack some grease in there. Um, you really should just buy a box of rubber gloves, because grease under the fingernails is honestly terrible. So, But oh well, it's what I get for not having the right stuff. Get my fingers in there, nice and greasy. You're just going to work it back, pack some grease in these areas that the bearing is going to be riding on, spindle side, just, you know, like I said, conservative but liberal right in the middle, you know, just, just enough to make sure there's, you know, lubrication, um, but not too much that it's going to just puke out the back. And when you look at this, 
um, yourself on this truck. You're gonna see there's like a, a space between the two bearings. Um, so you can you can put grease back there too. It's not really for anything to go or ride on, it's just there. So I'm not exactly sure what it's for. So you just kinda push the grease back there. That looks a lot better than before. Try to go up and in and then push. That's a lot of grease there. Just on the tips of your fingers so I can get it as far back as I can. And there we go. All right, so now that that's all greased up for the most part, barely in there. Let's put a little more on the top. Felt a little bit perfect, okay. All of this should work beautifully. Okay, that's that. Fingers are still greasy, oh well. Here's this super freaking greasy bearing. I'm gonna take as much of this as I can off, put it back, because that's, that's a little much. But, I don't know if you can see this. It's got grease all over it. It's very, very, very greasy, so slide it in there, slowly, you know, work it up so it's on its slot, and then boom, now it's in. Free spinning, happy, greasy, little son of a bitch. I'll wipe the grease off the fingers, try to save as much of it as you can, even though it's pretty cheap, honestly. It's only like five bucks for this, this whole can of fucking grease. Every other part on this was, I don't think anything was cheaper than 20 bucks, and I had to buy two of them each, so to spend $5 on something necessary, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Now, I've got me a grease pile going on over here, too. <clears throat> Just so you know. Putting all my grease rags in one spot so that when I'm done, it's like picking up a poop, you know, dog poop. You just grab it all with one clean rag, you like, pick it up, throw it in the you know, bag, and then... Out to the trash can. So, here we go. There is one more thing I need now that I should have brought over, but I just kind of forgot for now. Um, I'm gonna wipe this off here, and then I'm gonna go grab it. You put the rags right next to you. Give me a sec. Got your two spindle nuts. This is the one with the pin. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I don't trust my phone's um, focusing ability, but there's a pin on one. Pin facing outward. If you stick that pin inside your bearing, you are fucked. So it sticks out and it does that so that it can slide into one of these holes. And it's got a groove that sits on the actual spindle to prevent it from continuing to spin. Those, those are my two. We've got the pin. And with greasy fingers, we're going to slide it in there and thread it on. Now, it'll kind of fight you. It's normal for everything in cars. Come on. But once you get it on, you'll know. Bastard. The hardest part is all the fresh grease makes everything super slippery. There we go. It's on. All right. And because I truly am tired of all the grease crap, I'm going to wipe my fingers off again. Grab my spindle nut right here. Clean it off enough to use and grab. I need another rag. You're going to want to buy these. I swear to God, you're going to want to buy them. Try to clean the inside a little bit, I guess. And you're not going to tighten it with this. You're going to use a torque wrench. So I'm just using this to help me get it all the way without having to touch all the grease. Would it be easier to grab it with my fingers and spin it? Maybe. Maybe not. The hardest part's getting this damn ratchet out, so I wasn't going to do it until I was ready. 
Oh, I got a long way to go. Ah. Flathead. Ah. See what I'm saying? Why the hell is it gotta be so hard? Okay. This black socket here, the, the way it was painted, I don't know what it is, but super slippery right now. Can't like really spin it that well that way. Oh. Alright, so now we're set there. As of right now, this has been set to 150 foot pounds, which is just ridiculous. Um, I think I've never tightened anything that much. But it is an axle nut. You know, preventing anything from falling apart when you're going down the road. But the first one, the one that we're doing right now, is to seat slash set the bearings tension. Um, you can't have a bearing too loose. You know, spinning right now, it's it's very easy. It'll just kind of do its own thing. Um, what we are going to do is set this to 50 so that it presses the bearing in. It's like, boom. Now we're in. We know we're in. It's going to be tight, but that, that's how it is. So while you set this, you've got to there we go, um, grab your lug nuts. That's how I'm going to do it. And each time I put a little more tension, I'm going to be spinning that to help that bearing seat properly. You know, tighten a little more. Spin it some. It's going to get tight. That's how it is. A little more. It's a little bit tighter now. So let's spin and seat, spin and seat. Spin some more. A moment. Okay, just keep my eye on things. You know, I look weird, it doesn't matter. There's that 50. And then again, before we back it off. Okay. Now after I spin it, I am going to double check that that is still at 50. Come on, bastard. There we go. Okay. That's 50 foot-pounds of torque. You can tell it still spins, doesn't make any sound, but it is very tight. So, the next thing you do, go up here to 12 o'clock, and you're going to take it to 9 o'clock. Come on. There we go. Right there. So, from here to here, that's 90 degrees. Now, getting rags again, because, like I'm saying, this is a greasy, greasy job. In adjusting a torque wrench, you've got to twist the bottom, so this being fucking stainless steel, it's slippery as shit. Go to foot-pounds. We're going to lower it down again. This time we're lowering it to 30 foot-pounds. So, got that set there. Spin my little bottom knob tight. Wipe the fucking grease off of all this shit. Okay. Backed off. Now we're going to tighten it again to 30 foot pounds. There we go. So as we go, we're going to try to spin, you know, like you did the first time, just put, tighten it a little bit. This would be easier with another set of hands so I could spin and tighten. Spin some more. I wish my fingers weren't so greasy. It's sliding on everything. Okay. And then I think this is about a pop. Yep. That's 30. We're not done yet, but I am going to spin it some more. Feels good. Okay. You're going to back it off three-eighths of a turn. Now, what you're about to see me do does not look like three-eighths of a turn, but it's exactly what Vortec Garage did. And I'm going to do what he did. So he's not turning it 90 degrees. He turns it about that much right there. And that's what he does. That's it. Um, now, 
locating where that is. I'm going to get my washer. I'm going to put this tooth here. I'm going to show you guys. My fingers are cleaner. I'm struggling. Okay. You can see that that's in there. Pretty good amount of grease. Just about everything. And there's that pin. And up top right there, where that grease is piling up on the threads, that's that groove. So it's going to go in like this. And hopefully that pin is lined up. There we go. And we are almost in. It's so close. I'm not going to trust that, so I'm going to... I don't know. I mean, it's seated. It definitely went in. I just want a little bit more of center than that, so... I'm going to grab my needle nose here, and hopefully I can grab this off. I've not been too successful prior. It's kind of a weird grab from the bottom, grab from the top, jiggle, jiggle, get it off. Bastard. And those holes are just small enough that I can't, like, grab it. <laughs> All right. So, little screwdriver. To the rescue. I know I'm still zoomed in, but if you have a pick, the pick would probably be a more uh, suitable choice for tool there. So, slide it on. Just a touch. Just a touch. Okay, now this. Hopefully I didn't flip it around. If I did, I'll just have to do it again, but I just don't like getting this guy out of there. Oh yeah, alright. We're on that pin now. So that's all the way up, pressed, seated. Great. I'm gonna try to set up this camera again. You can still see what I'm doing. Okay, right there. Now I'm grabbing, where's the camera? There we go, this nut. So the one that doesn't have a pin on it. <laughs> and we're gonna be putting this one up to 150 foot pounds. And that's it. And after that, it's just pretty easy. I can't tell if I just, if my flash just turned off. Is my camera still rolling? All right, it is. Oh, that was interesting. Well, it looked like my flash um, turned off and then back on again. Okay. I'm using a rag because this. Greasy finger stuff is really starting to annoy me. <laughs> I don't like the way it feels. But, oh freaking well. I appreciate that this is a ratchet. I mean, I think that's how they're all designed, but that's just mm, big old wrench or big old ratchet. Just always something nice. Okay, seat. Oh, it's already tightening. Okay, well, before we go and tighten it, let's loosen this little nipple guy off and... Bring it up to 150. Damn it. This is why greasy fingers suck. It's hard to twist stuff. Almost there. Okay, I gotta loosen that back nipple again. Just a little bit more. I didn't open it enough. And we are at 150. Alright. Spin it up. Get her tight, and this is going to be fine. So I'm going to put this lid back on the grease. Step one. And then get out of the way. Just get all these tools out of the way here. Just so I can pull down on this. Oh, shit. There we go. All right. That is a satisfying click. That sound. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Now we need the new worn equipment. Wipe my fingers off a little bit. Let's see. Get the crap out of there. Alrighty. I'll be right back with those lockers.
Now, I'm sure someone's gonna squall at me for calling them lockers, but it's pretty much what they are. Very cheap locker, but I don't wanna keep calling them hub, yeah, yeah. hubs. Yeah. Sounds like a, just an ugly word. So. As we all know, these need grease. So I'm gonna put just a little in here. I don't think you need to, um, but I'm going to. And it's I'm not putting a whole whole lot this time. You know, I'm not packing it. I'm just I want it a little greasier than what it is. So it's got like a little play in there. So I'll put some. Just talking. More. Not putting a whole lot this time. Like just just index fingers worth, pretty much. Rub it around and spin the grease in. Ouch. Line up the bottom one. Right about there. It's supposed to. There we go. And then just turn these teeth up here on the outside, unless it's already in. It's not in. For a moment, I'll pull them back out just a second so I can spin it and really let it sit in. It'll seat here in just a second. There we go. See? Now that went all the way in. Now that's seated, there's a retaining ring right here. And it'll just simply go like it's right here. Um, the way I do it is I start on this side and just kind of push it in. So get it in the groove as soon as I can. Right there. Press, press, press. And then that's in. So now that's in, grab this older rag because my fingers aren't really the cleanest in the world and I'm still going to be kind of working there. Um, I don't have on my newer truck... Um, this is something that Vortex Garage had gone over in his video, who I keep referring to. Um, he stated that it comes with this first retaining ring and then another one for the actual spindle. Um, but it is stated that some of these newer modeled Chevys don't have a spot for that uh, snap ring to go right here on the spindle. But they say it shouldn't affect any performance. Everything honestly should work just fine. The safety of it doesn't affect the warranty so there's that and I'm gonna rock it my truck doesn't have one but I do have that retaining clip in there and I'll show you with these right here these are the screws take two of them to test thread the one in doesn't need to be too far thread the other one in once again doesn't have to be too too far Oh, perfect. So there's just a little amount of play. It's exactly how it's supposed to be. I'll show you right here. I can't do it with, two, with just one finger. See that? Just that little bit of play. Let's see if I can not move my fucking hand.